Let us get cozy. I got a blanket. Got a blanket. <sighs> looks like the 4th of July. Oh my God. You guys have been tagging me in this t-shirt that says looks like the 4th of July. It looks like this. And you guys have been tagging me in it all over TikTok because I need it for 4th of July. And you're so right. I got it. I got Say no more. Like I saw one person tag me, immediately got it. And then I got like so many notifications of you guys telling me I needed that shirt. Where we not? I'm getting my hands on it. But for now, let's look at this shirt. Thomas Shelby, bitch. I am currently rewatching Peaky Blinders because Giant has never watched it. I know. I, I don't even want to talk about it. Anyway, it is time. So I'm taking him through my favorite shows. You know what I mean? We're going to watch Peaky Blinders. We're going to watch Sons of Anarchy. We're going to watch Breaking Bad. We've watched some episodes of Criminal Minds. I feel like he's not going to get into all of Criminal Minds too many seasons, but I'm so excited. He's already watched the originals. He's watched One Tree Hill. So we're taking him through the best shows of all time. Anyway, what is this again? A wrap up. Let's do it. Hello, my shiny face. Hello, my besties. It is officially that time of the month again. I don't know how we got here. Okay. I feel like I was just making a May wrap up. In my defense, I was late to my May wrap up. So maybe that's why it feels like I just did it. But now here we are again to talk about all the books I read in June. Now, I am filming this on June 26th. So we've got 27, 28, 29, 30. We've got four more days until June is officially over. And I'm working on two books right now. But those are for a video. So I want to finish those before I talk about it on here. So those will come in next month's wrap up because odds are I'm gonna finish them by July you know what I mean so so far well so not so far in all of June we've read un dois tres cuatro cinco We've read 15 books. Oh, what a nice number. We've read 15 books in the month of June. I will say most of them were audiobooks. I will tell you guys how I read them, if it was on my Kindle, paperback, audio. I will tell you guys what I rated them, a little bit about each book. Of course, as usual, no spoilers in any of these videos. You guys know. You guys know the drill. I've made millions of these already. I think I've made one for every month my channel has been alive. That's crazy. I'm so tired. I literally woke up today at eight and I did Orange Theory and then I went to Pilates and later tonight I have a workout class. I'm trying to keep myself busy, you know what I mean? And and I'm just deteriorating, deteriorating. But that's neither here nor there. Okay, let's talk about the books. Most of them I will say, I actually don't have physically. I only have a couple of them physically here with me. Should I talk about the physical ones first or should I talk about the Kindle ones first? Hmm, let me think. I'm gonna talk about the Kindle ones first. No, I'm gonna, yeah. hmm, pause. You know what? I'm going to talk about a series that I started. Well, that I continued first, okay? The King series. If you guys don't know, this is The King and The King. Hello? This is The King series by T.M. Fraser. King and Tyrant are the first two books in that series. And I read it, I want to say about two or three months ago because it's my mom's favorite series. Now, when I was in Florida this past month, I started reading the rest of the series. So I read Lawless, Soulless, Preppy 1, Preppy 2, and Preppy 3, the next five books in the series. So I pretty much finished the main series and now there's just side characters for me to go through. Essentially, the King series by T.M. Fraser follows a friend group. It's King, Preppy, and Bear, and each of them have books with their significant others. And it is dual POV and it's dark, but like in a different way. It's not a dark romance, but it's like motorcycle club criminals kind of thing. So it does have that dark aspect to it. Still such a trigger warnings, but it's a very different series, I would say. Like if you're looking Looking for something different if you're looking for something like that gives gives you sons of anarchy vibes but like not too too much i would say the king series is perfect for you king and tyrant since i read like two or three months ago i already talked about it in those wrap-ups but lawless and soulless were bears books and i will say those were my top favorite lawless i read on my kindle and soulless i listened to it because i couldn't find the kindle version i don't think there is one but bear was my favorite bear was my number one which is shocking because i feel like most people's favorite is preppy but i rated lawless and soulless 4.25 because i just i adore that man okay he was the sweetest his story was the best he was he's in a motorcycle club and like just it had a lot of plot their dynamic was great their romance was great great it had spice it had everything it had everything i wanted so 4.25 for both of those then i read preppy which is i guess preppy's books are just preppy one two and three i don't think they really have names oh it's like the life and death of samuel clear clear water one two and three yeah, something like that. I read all of those. I rated all of them four stars. I liked them just as much as King. It did piss me off a lot. Like some parts really, really angered me. Just like King, a lot of parts I'm like, you son of a bitch. Like it just pisses me off. Whereas Bear, I wasn't really angry at him. He's just, he was just, I, I forgive him for everything he does. I love that man. Anyway, 
so I finished the beginning of that series. There are side characters that have books as well that I will be reading probably next month or something. I just like to give myself little breaks in between series because if I read it all back to back to back, I tend to get a little bored unless it has only like four books or a trilogy or something like that, you know? So I read those first ones and I will be continuing. If you want to read the King series by T.M. Fraser, you do have to go in order. So I would say ring King, re, re, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, words. Here's the order, here. King, Tyrant, then then lawless, lawless, then soulless, then preppy, one, two, and three. The order is right here. Do you see it? It's on top of my head. Okay, I gave you time to screenshot. Um, anyway, I really enjoyed the series, I will say. I understand why my mom loves it so much. The characters are so lovable, but also so flawed, which is why I think you love them so much. They're so human. And it has such great plot. Like, it's not just about the romance, but also there's other plots going on. And the Fawn family is just a one so I really enjoyed it you know what I really don't like a one I don't know why I said that I don't like it I don't like saying a one I don't like a one steak sauce I just don't really like the words a one I'm never gonna say it again mark my words never gonna say a one again if I say it in the near future you yell at me you throw eggs at me and tomatoes anyway then I went into a trilogy by Kat Singleton it's her billionaire trilogy hold on I do have I do have the paperbacks to this one. Hold on, hold on everyone. Here they are. Okay, I do have two in special edition and the other one not special edition, so they're not really matching, but let's disregard that, okay? Here it is, okay? This one's the first one. Black ties, white lies, look how cute she is. Then we've got pretty rings and broken things. And then this one's the one that I don't have the special edition, which is the latest one. Oh my God, my phone stuck to it. That's funny. What was I saying? Oh, Bright Lights, Summer Nights. Um, this one's the most recent one. So I listened to both of these on audiobook and then I read this one on Kindle. That's upside down. I read this one on Kindle. This is, like I said, Trilogy by Kat Singleton. I think it's the first books that she wrote. I think. I want to say it's her only series so far. Could be lying about that. Your Honor, don't quote me on it. Anyway, this series um, is called the Black Tide Billionaire series and they follow three different best friends and each of them have books. They are interconnected standalones, but I would recommend you reading them all in order because I feel like it gives you the overall story story, and it's still really fun. And I will say the first two books were really good in audiobook format. The third one, I don't know because I read the Kindle arc, but I assume that the audiobook is just as good as the other ones. The first book, Black Ties and White Lies, follows Margot and Beck and it is dual POV. The second book, Pretty Rings and Broken Things, follows Archer and Winnie, again dual POV. And the last book bright lights and summer nights follows emma and preston and one more time say it with me now dual pov um all three of these girlies are best friends and you see them in each other's books and then you see them falling in love with hot billionaires need i say more like in each of these books the billionaire does something outrageously amazing like in this one the first one this is not a spoiler it's just like a little tidbit but if you want to skip this feel free he literally buys a company so he could talk to her like a billion dollar company and he's like yeah whatever just want to just want to speak to her Excuse me? And then in this one, he literally like buys a home so she could decorate it. She likes decorating things. What? Like I would just decorate my bookshelf. What do you mean? You're buying me a home to decorate. Sir, sir. I mean, yeah, do it. Like spend your money on me. Spend all your money on me. That's how I know you love me. But still, damn. Anyway, love. And I will say the third one has one of the little like acts that I love the most, which is like acts of service in a way, but like small acts. I feel like small quiet loves are the best ones and in this one he like doesn't know which kind of coffee she likes so in the morning he brings her iced and hot just in case and I just think that's so anyway clearly uh I am impressed by the little things because these two just like spent all their money and then this one like gets a coffee and I'm like wow <laughs> amazing <laughs> So what was I saying? I read this series. Yes, this trilogy. What did I rate it? Okay, so Black Ties and White Lies, which is the first one, I rated three stars. The second one, Pretty Rings and Broken Things, I rated 3.5 stars. And then the last one, Bright Lights and Summer Nights, I rated 3.75 stars. I, I think the series just got better as you went, but I do think that they were all really, really fun. For me, a three star is not a bad rating. I feel like a lot of people think that that's a bad rating. For me, it's just like an average rating. Like the book was good, but it didn't change my life. You know what I mean? So I would still recommend that you read these. They were really fun, especially if you're just looking for a cute little palate cleanser. And they're still spicy and hot. So there you go. Cat Singleton, I love you. Next up, I listened to another one. Clearly, like I said, audiobooks were my shit this month. I listened to Crossroads by Daphne Perry. I'm not gonna lie to you. I remember not a single fucking thing. I know it's a small town, as usual. All of Daphne Perry's romances are small town. It's a small town and it's childhood 
friends to lovers to strangers to friends. There you go. I do remember that. Now, what these characters' names are? Fucking beyond me. I'm gonna find out. Just you wait. I'm gonna find out. Hold on. Hold on. As of right now, mind blank. No thoughts behind these eyes, okay? I, I don't know these people's names. That's how you know I didn't really care for it. <laughs> <sighs> it definitely wasn't bad though. I remember actually kind of enjoying myself. It was a really fun audiobook. I just forgot their names. <laughs> Okay, India and West. There you go. Okay, India used to go to Wes's family's ranch when she was little with her family. And now it's years later and she comes to work for said ranch. And by work, I mean by. And her and Wes see each other again after many, many years. So it is going back and forth between then and now. You see when they first meet and when they're kids and kind of falling in love. And then you see them years, years, years later. I don't know why I said years, years, years. It hasn't been that long. It's been a pretty long time. Anyway, years later, and you see them kind of reconnecting and seeing each other again. I will say this book dealt with some heavier topics, like it has a lot of grief and stuff like that. So still look up your trigger warnings. But as usual, it's just a fun, fun little audiobook in Montana. Daphne Perry's usual stuff, you know, I was not obsessed with it, but I also didn't hate it by any means. I definitely enjoyed it. It was, again, kind of like the Billionaire series, just a palate cleanser that I really needed my palate to be cleansed. <laughs> nothing crazy impressive, but nothing horribly disimpressive either. Is this impressive a word? I feel like it's not. Let's search it up. Oh my god, did I tell you guys? Okay, um, remember when I was telling you in one video, I don't really remember what video it was, unimpressed or disimpressed? Oh my god, disimpressed is a word. Feeling no admiration, interest, or respect. Okay, I don't feel no respect towards it. I just, oh no, it's not disimpressed. It's unimpressed. Yeah, see? Disimpressed, wrong. Unimpressed, correct. Okay, so I, I felt un, unimpressed. I don't even really know what I was saying. Anyway, Crossroads by Devlin Perry. I listened to it. 3.75. Not a crazy, amazing book, but also not a bad one either. Just a fun one, you know? I don't need to own it. Anyway, remember what I was telling you guys in another video? That Giant was making me try Carabas again after years of not being to Carabas. I like had a vendetta against Carabas. I tried it. It, it was so good. Y'all, I don't like to admit when I'm wrong because I'm never wrong. You know, I am just a girl. Anyway, it was so good. It was so good. I didn't really like the soups like as much as I like Olive Garden because the gnocchi soup at Olive Garden. Ooh, but I did really like my meal. It was delicious. I got like a steak Alfredo thing. It was really good. And then my appetizer was really good too. And I remember getting dessert that I liked. It was a chocolate something. I liked it. Anyway, so that was my update on Carabas. I no longer have a vendetta against it. If you want to take me to Carabas one day, I'm down. Moving on. Oh, <laughs> then I read, uh, I read, I read my most anticipated read of the year, God of War by Rena Kent. This isn't a video if you guys want to go watch me read God of War and Taming 7 and know my exact thoughts. There it is. But this follows Eli and Ava. It's dual POV. It's the last book in the Legacy of God series. It is God of Malice, God of Pain, God of Wrath, God of Ruin, God of Fury, and God of War. Wow. I remembered all of that. Good for me. Mind is here today. Anyway, this was the last book in the series and I, I was I was expecting a lot, which is probably why I was let down. Again, one of those that was not a bad book. I still rated it 3.75. I read the Kindle version. Um, no, I didn't. I read the paperback. Yeah, I read the paperback. I rated it 3.75. The difference between a 3.75 for God of War and then a 3.75 for Crossroads for me is like, I didn't expect anything from Crossroads. So 3.75 is like, good. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, that was good. That was like entertaining. Not gonna change my life, but sure, I would recommend. But then God of War, for instance, when I was expecting it to be a five star, it being a 3.75 is not as good. So that's why I'm more disappointed with this one. It just didn't give to me. It like, it gave more mature vibes than the rest of the Legacy of God series, I will say, but it just didn't give the same feeling. Like everybody just felt separated. It didn't feel like the end of a series. Like the Eden series, when that was over, the last book, like it feels like an ending. It feels like a cohesive ending. Some Kind of Perfect by Chris and Becca Ritchie, the last book in the Addicted Calloway Sister series. It feels like a full ending. You know, this does not feel like that by any means. It just feels like any sort of standalone. And I didn't really like Eli or Ava. I mean, she was kind of a baddie, but at the same time, she really annoyed me. And he also really annoyed me. He had no personality and I just didn't see their love. So mostly everything about this book disappointed me. So that's why it's a 3.75. There are things that I liked because it's the Legacy of God series, but not enough for it to be higher than that. If you want to go watch my full disappointment, go watch it here. <laughs> 
you know, besties of mine, if my hair is looking a little, a little crusty, it's because I haven't washed her in like several days. We're not going to talk about her. Okay. We're going to mind our business because we're best friends and we, we don't judge. I've showered. I just haven't washed my hair. I'll wash it tonight. How about that? What do you guys think? Yeah, I guess. Anyway, what did I read next? Oh, I listened to King of Slug. Diana Wong. I listened to this one, but I do have the paperback because I must. This is the Kings of Sin series. This is book number four. The first one's King of Wrath. The second one's King of Pride. The third one's King of Greed. And then King of Sloth. They are all interconnected standalones. You do not have to read one to read the other one. But they all follow like kind of the same friend group. At least like the same, not friend group I would say, but like the same. Well, they are kind of all friends. The same group of people, let's say. So you do see people in each other's books so you can read them in order if you do so choose and I will say one thing about Anna Huang her books are always fun they may not impress me so so much as much as like Twisted Hate for instance which is my favorite book by her ever but they are always entertaining this one follows Xavier and Sloan and Xavier is like the son of the richest man in Colombia. <laughs> I don't really know why this man's so rich. I, I don't really understand that stuff about money. Like he's just fucking rich. I don't know. Like, you know how some people are just rich? Like, do they own companies? Do they own stocks? Like, how do you get those? Like, do you just, do you invest in stocks? I don't really know. He's rich. He's the richest man in Colombia. Okay. And Xavier is his son. And um, Sloan is the PR person for the the family. So she kind of takes care of everything for them. <laughs> like a glorified babysitter. Publicist. That's the word. Publicist. PR. Public relations. Publicist. Yeah, there you go. So Sloan, Xavier, Duo POV, richest man in Colombia. This is called King of Sloth because you know how sloths are like sleepy and lazy and this book is just like snore. So that... <laughs> I'm literally kidding. It's not that bad. It was another one that was a 3.75. My three stars are like, I, they have like scales to my 3.75s. Like I either enjoyed it because I wasn't expecting anything. So it's a 3.75 and I'm like, oh, fine. Or I was expecting too much and then I just didn't enjoy it as much, but it's still a 3.75. You know what I mean? You just gotta be in my head. You just gotta get it. If you get it, you get it. Don't focus so much on the rating side of it and focus more on what I'm telling you about the book. There you go. That'll get you further. Anyway, it was boring. It was, it was a bit too long. I will say it was like 400 pages of just pure absolutely fucking nothing. I felt like a sloth falling asleep reading this book, but some parts really got me. Like the first half, it had me. And then the second half is kind of when it all went downhill. But I really liked Xavier and I really liked Sloan separately. Um, I don't know if I liked them together, but I liked them separately, that's for sure. Um, I fear the Kings of Sin series is just not for me, but am I gonna keep trying? Yes. Yes, I am because I do love Anna Huang and I just, I want to keep trying. One of them will hit, you know, King of Greed really hit. This one, not so much, but I feel like the next one maybe will hit. We'll see what happens. So yeah, 3.75, I listened to it. It was a great audiobook. It was a duet narration. So fun, entertaining, you know, if you're looking for just something that will just get your mind off things, there you go. But if you're looking for something that's gonna, you know, absolutely change the trajectory of your life, this may not be the one. You could be the one. You gonna be the one. Then I read The Housemaid is Watching by Frida McFadden. This is the third and I wanna say final book in the Housemaid series by her. You have The Housemaid, you have The Housemaid's Revenge, The Housemaid's Secret, and then you have The Housemaid is Watching. Um, it all follows the same group of characters. I can't really tell you about this one without spoiling all the other ones. So I'm not going to, okay? Just know that I feel like Frida McFadden is really milking this series. She needs to stop. She needs to be stopped, okay? That's enough. That's enough, Frida. Put the pen down. Put the pen down and stop writing housemaid books because what in the fuckery fuck was this? I rated it a 2.5 and that is me being kind. No, not even 2.5. Take away the 0.5. You don't deserve it. Two stars and that is me being kind. Only because I finished it in one sitting as I usually do with Frida McFadden books. So, you know, at least there's that. But was there anything else to it? No. It was not only boring, but it was also predictable. It was just a double threat of fucking horribleness. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Frida, if you're watching this, I'm just kidding, girl. Y you're cute or whatever, but stop it. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people could like this book. I am just not one of those people. I rated it two stars. Again, I just can't really talk about it too much without spoiling anything. It would spoil the entire series if I talk about the characters, if I talk about the plot, if I talk about anything. Just know that it follows the same ones as the other books in the series. So I would say you have to read all of them to kind of understand. I loved the first one, I think because I it was like my first Freedom McFadden book and I was just really shocked. I liked the plot of the second one a lot. I wasn't as shocked, but I loved the plot. And then the third one, well, just throw that one in the trash. Three stars. No, nope, two stars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I listened to one more. I know you guys, I know you're tired of me saying this, but I listened to another one. Oh, The Housemaid, by the way, I read that one on Kindle. 
Anyway, I listened to Leather and Lark by Bryn Weaver. This is the second book in the Ruinous Love Trilogy. <coughs> oh my god, I'm choking. <coughs> I'm gonna die. <coughs> Eight men, am I right? <coughs> I've been waiting for this one. Uh, I'm hungry. Should I make chicken? Oh, I preheated the oven. Do you think it's preheated? I didn't hear a beep. Did you guys hear a beep? I didn't hear a beep. I feel like it didn't. What was I gonna say? Oh yes, Leather and Lark. I listened to this one. This is the second book in the Ruinous Love Trilogy is what I was trying to say. It follows different characters. They are all following different brothers. So the first book um, follows one of them, the other one follows the other one, and the third one's gonna follow the last one. <laughs> that gave you a whole bunch of nothing. But you don't have to read it in order, but Butcher and Blackbird is the first one, and the second one is Leather and Lark. This one follows Lark and, uh, what is this man's name? Lachlan? Lock Lachlan. His name's Loch Lachlan. Lachlan. Yeah, his name's Lachlan. So it follows Lachlan and Lark, and Lachlan is Rowan's brother from the first one, and Lark is Sloane's best friend from the first one. Was her name Sloane? I think her name was Sloane. Anyway, um, Lark is a serial killer, or she likes to call herself multiple the leader. Let's not call her a serial killer, okay? Let's not label her. And uh, I was gonna say leather. And Lachlan is a contract killer, okay? So this is a dark romance rom-com. I know two things you never expect to see in the same sentence, but it is also Marriage of Convenience and it is also Enemies to Lovers and it is also Slow Burn. Everybody has rated this book terribly, okay? They're rating it like two stars or lower. It's just not, it's not hitting for people. So I expected it not to hit for me. And I think because I went into it with absolutely zero expectations, it kind of exceeded it. I really enjoyed it. I rated this one four stars and out of all the books in this this TBR, no, this wrap up, it's one of the only ones that has four stars. Like besides the King series, all the other ones were three or lower. So you know what? Give it up for Leather and Lark. It was a four star. I really enjoyed it. I feel like it was fun. Their banter was fun. It's funny. It's dark, but like not in a too, too dark way. I fell for the characters. Lachlan was the cutest fucking thing. I didn't expect him to be sweet, but he was. Like he watched her favorite movie 12 times. Sir. Sir. He finds people for her to unalive. Sir. Once again, I am on my hands and knees. No, I'm not on my hands. I'm on my knees. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and it was a great audiobook. Um, I will say there was a bit too much giggling. Like they were giggling a little too much for my liking. And I'm just not, uh, I'm just not vibing with that at the moment. I don't want you to giggle in front of me. How dare you be happy, you son of a bitch. So they were giggling too much, but it was still good. <laughs> and it was a duet narration. So like they speak in each other's POVs. Like when it's regular narration, the girl will play the girl and the guy will play the guy, right? And then when the girl has a quote in the guy's POV, the guy will still say it, but he'll say it like, hello, like that. Like he'll try to sound like a girl. And then if if the guy has a, has a sentence in the girl's POV, she'll be like, hello, you know? But when it's duet narration, even when it's in each other's POV, the narrator still speaks. So it just kind of feels more like a movie in your head, which is what Leather and Lark felt like for me. I rated it four stars. I actually really enjoyed it. Was it as good as Butcher and Blackbird? No, but I think I caught it at the perfect time. I think I went into it with no expectations and I still really liked it. But beware that not a lot of people are liking this one. So see it for yourself, form your own opinion. You know, in a world, in a world of, of opinions, opinions, form your form own. Your own. Sure. Yeah. I need to make the chicken. Should I pause to make chicken? There are only two books left. We're gonna wait, but I really do need to make this chicken. Then I read this one on Kindle and I did buy the paperback because I really liked it. It is To Catch a Firefly by Emmy Sanders. I've never heard of this author before, my first book by her, but you know what? I probably will be reading more. This follows Ellis and Lucky and it is an MM and childhood best friends to lovers. And it is just the softest, cutest fucking thing in the world. Like Ellis, I just wanted to tackle him in a hug and put him in my pocket and never let go. He was the cutest thing. And Lucky was so amazing to him that you just fell for both characters so much. And they have such a great story. Like I said, childhood friends to lovers. And it is also small town and it is also MM. It, it's a, it's always been you kind of thing. You feel the angst, you feel the love, you feel the slow burn. If you're looking for something that'll make you feel emotional, this is the one. It felt a little like Archer's voice in a way. Like it gave me that same kind of like tug on my heartstrings that Archer's voice did. I felt the same way about this. It didn't like fully five star hit me. I wish it did because I haven't had a five star like I told you guys since March, but I'm trying. I'm working on it, okay? Um, and I expected this to be maybe possibly one of those as I was reading it, but by the end, I just didn't. It doesn't feel like the kind of book that I would get tattooed on me, you know? And that's how you know I really love a book. <laughs> 
But you know what I will say it was pretty damn close. 4.5, I would say, if you're going to read any books from this wrap-up, make it the, be this one, because this one is really good. Either the King series or this one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. To catch a firefly, Emmy Sanders, please search up your trigger warning still. I don't remember it dealing with, like, super heavy topics, but it does. It does have some. He was my beginning and my never-ending. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, yeah. It's going to tug on your heartstrings. Trust me, trust me. And it's on Kindle Unlimited. And lastly, you guys, I re-listened to a book that I read in January because it just came out and it is Love Unwritten by Lauren Asher. I, as you guys remember, read this, like I said, in January. There's a video of me reading it right here with Funny Story if you guys want to go watch that. And if you guys want to watch that month's wrap up so you could see me fully talk about it, it'll be there. But I listened to it again because it just came out. So I was like, well, gotta experience it one more time, you know? So I listened to it. I rated it five stars once more, you know? Um, this doesn't count as my five star read though, because I already read it in January. You know what I mean? It doesn't count if it's a reread. I'm trying to find a new five star. So this one, sadly, will not count. However, it is still really fucking good. It follows Rafa and Ellie. Rafa is a single dad in Lake Wisteria, and he is the father to Nico, the cutest little boy ever. And Ellie is their nanny. I wouldn't, it's not like really crazy big age gap, to be honest. It's not like a age gap that even makes a really big difference, but it is single dad nanny. It is living together. It is grumpy sunshine. Well, she's not really sunshine. Grumpy, less grumpy. How about that? <laughs> it is like uh, both tortured characters, like both trauma bonding. It is sad. It is angsty. It is beautiful. It is a slow burn. I would highly recommend. Um, but of course I would highly recommend because I love Lauren Asher. Uh, love Redesigned in the first is the first book in this series. And then Love Unwritten is the second one. They both follow different characters. You don't have to read one to read the other, but I would recommend read Love Redesigned and then read Love Unwritten. And you know what? If this series bores you, I feel like a lot of people have had that opinion. I feel like maybe listen to the audiobook and maybe that would help because the audiobook is really good and it is a duet narration. And then the third one is coming out next year. So you just, you wait. Love Unwritten, five stars. But you know, I had already rated it that. So I'm not going to bore you too much with the details. Now I'm going to go cook my chicken because I got things to do and people to see. I don't have anybody to see, but I do have chicken to make. You know what really upsets me? Raw chicken. Ew. Ew. Like, it's just like, you know what I mean? It's so grimy. And then when you're listening to an audiobook and they're like spicy, like it, it's like a spicy thing going on. And then you, you're like holding a raw chicken. It just... But that's neither here nor there. Anyway, tell me what you guys read this month. Tell me your favorite book. Tell me your favorite book of this month so that I can find a five-star read. I'm working on a video right now which is looking for five-star reads. You will see that soon, which is why I'm trying to finish the books I'm currently reading. And hopefully I will find a five-star read in that video. Stay tuned. Maybe not. You never know. I love you so much, my beautiful besties. Have such a great day. I love you. I love you. I love you. Come here so I can give you a forehead kiss. Yeah?